Look what you did. Look what we did. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> our so first beautiful. bowl together. This is our baby together. Back in 2019, I got introduced to my very first experience with the wood lathe. One which as a metal worker, I found to be incredibly zen. And it landed me an award for the spinniest maker. So like any avid skill collector, I've decided it's time for me to take proper wood turning for a spin. But first, I have to catch my flight. Like any new apprentice, I've realized I need an expert woodworker to teach me so I can learn wood lathes, wood processing, and even about the wood itself. And I know just the woman to teach me. Shara's made a name for herself in the Atlanta area as a skilled woodworker, lending her talents to multiple shows, being an ambassador for brands, as well as teaching to the local community, young and old. So if you wanna learn wood start to finish, she's the maker to see. My name is Shar Miller King. I'm a woodworker known as Wood Maven on Instagram, and welcome to my lumber yard in Kennesaw, Georgia. So today we're at Peach State Lumber. I'm going to show you the process of the lumber actually coming off the truck and what it takes for you to take it home and use it. Okay. So first, the wood rolls across here and it rips one edge of the wood. So when you take it home, you actually have three sides that are surfaced. So typically wood is sold as S2S or S4S, which means surface four sides. But here it's three, so you can take it home, run it across your table saw and have S4S wood. And then we go through the planer. Now this planer is a beast, right? This thing is huge. <laughs> Normally in our houses, we have like a 13 inch planer which basically planes the top side of the wood, one side at a time, right? But this one is special. 24 inch, double sided helical planer that planes both sides at the same time. That turns into sawdust, it goes up those pipes and there's about three to four truckloads of sawdust that leave this place every day. With a name like double sided helical planer, this tool sounds epic, but what is it? Well, a planer is a woodworking machine used to trim boards down to a flat, consistent thickness. A typical planer consists of a cylindrical drum with long, straight blades on it that chip away at the thickness of the board. A helical planer uses a series of smaller blades arranged in a spiral along the drum. There are several advantages to this arrangement of blades, but the benefit that caused this technology to take over the industrial woodworking world is its ability to reduce noise. In the 1970s, John S. Stewart applied for a patent with the design for a helical cutter head for wood planers. He said this would reduce noise levels during planing due to having more than one knife blade engaged in the workpiece at any instant. This technological development was initially driven by regulation. Governments were making requirements to reduce workplace noise levels in mills and factories. John not only achieved his noise reduction goal, his design also gave woodworkers a number of other engineering benefits, including a smoother finish on difficult sections of wood like knots and burls and simple to replace carbide blades. Those carbide blades are harder and they maintain a sharp edge, meaning they can last up to 200 times longer than basic carbon steel. Okay, let's get back to the lumber yard. Is it at that point sold? It is at that point sold. So most of it is sold at the minimum of an inch thick. And I think it goes all the way up to like three inches. That's cool. So I can actually come to a lumber yard and I can get what I could get at a big box store, but then I can get way more, it looks like. The difference between a big box store and a lumber yard is usually the type of lumber that you can get. At a big box store, home centers, you think pine and you think poplar, and those things are cool, but those things are very specific to construction. So this is all really cool. So let's go see the cool stuff then. Let's go. I just said cool like five times. Oh my gosh, look at these pieces. This is so pretty. This is a $4,800 piece of wood. One of the reasons why this happens is because of water. Like if a piece of lumber sits in water for a long period of time, ridges start to grow. Ridges happen as a result of the environment. Like this was likely sitting in water, probably like a rainy couple of seasons. Like that's all from water. 
Why you you just got taller? That's not fair. Oh my bad. <laughs> you stand up there. <laughs> no, it's just my high five. <laughs> Boards are heavy. No, we strong. We got this. We got it. So we've graduated magically oh. to walnut. Walnut. Oh, I love it smells. Walnut. Oh, it smells so good, right? Yes. A uh, zebra wood. How does it get the striping? Do That's you know? the grain pattern. That's just its grain That's pattern? just the grain pattern. All wow. natural. Oh, and there's like a red version that's tiger. We're in the jungle now. We needed an umbrella. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we do our dance. This board just came off of the planer. Mm -hmm. And while they're planing, they sometimes stumble on some really cool things. You see these little holes? Uh huh. Inside of the wood, you know what went in those? An ambrosia beetle. Oh, what does that do to the wood? So it bores into the wood, and then it leaves these little tracks. So this is ambrosia maple. Some people call it wormy maple because it looks like worm traps, but those are actually created by beetles. We don't know how deep it goes, but you can plant it through another layer, and it'll reveal an even more beautiful pattern that you can use. And once you throw some finish on this, oh my goodness, it pops so much. Okay, we have to drill down into this one. Ambrosia beetles get their name from the ambrosia fungus that the beetles carry with them into a host log. The fungal spores spread from their legs and grow in special tunnels created by the beetles specifically for harvesting the fungus as food. Yep, that's right. These beetles are farmers. Now, the beetle infestation causes the wormy pattern, but it's the fungus that creates the black and gray stain we can see surrounding the tunnels. This may seem like a minor wood issue, but even a small infestation can have a massive financial impact on a lumber yard. For example, a log 30 feet long and one foot in diameter with an infestation depth of only one inch can have nearly a third of its wood volume degraded, meaning that the wood can no longer be used for higher priced applications like veneers or defect-free lumber. This is why coming up with alternative uses for this wormy wood is so important. It keeps the lumber yard in business and it keeps us from wasting valuable resources. Let's see what other interesting designs nature has in store for us at the lumber yard. So this is a burl. This is a burl. So a burl is basically a growth on a tree and it's caused by many different things. It could be a disease, infection, some sort of insect that has gotten into that part of the tree, a limb that's come off too soon. And basically this is how the tree heals itself by creating a burl. It's basically the cells and the fibers growing in an erratic pattern. So it's like a tumor. Basically. Interesting. Yes, it is, it is a tumor that technically is not harmful to the tree, but the reason why people like it so much is because the grain pattern grows so erratically oh, wow. that it is completely different than the actual grain pattern in the trunk of the tree. These are really amazing. So what could we do if we took this home? What could we make with it? The possibilities are endless. Most people turn bowls. Ooh. out of these and they make really pretty bowls because once you get down into the nitty gritty of this the grain pattern really starts to get exposed and then you just fall in love with it i want to fall in love with the burl can we fall in love with the burl and make a bowl shower yes let's take it <gasps> home okay you're coming with us I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, i got my burl baby what are you about six months now yeah i think so i mean either that or two burritos <laughs> This is my lathe. Mm -hmm. Isn't it awesome? It is awesome. So this is a Rikon MIDI lathe, and this is a great benchtop option, especially for beginners. So today we're gonna turn a bowl. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. It's really easy to use, too. Okay, I'm excited. Let's All right, make a burl bowl. Let's do it. We're talking about turning a bowl, but why is that the process woodworkers use? Wood turning is the art of using a wood lathe with handheld tools to cut shapes that are symmetrical about an axis of rotation. In this method of woodworking, a piece of wood turns at a high speed on the lathe, while the woodworker uses a stationary tool to make contact with the wood and create uniform cuts around the circumference of the piece. All of that to say, the wood will turn while we carve, allowing us to make a bowl with a consistent shape all the way around. 
Now, when it comes to turning, a very important consideration is centering the mass of the wood on that axis of rotation. The goal is to keep the spinning forces on the piece balanced. Think of a merry-go-round on a playground, spinning at a high speed. What happens when you overload one side, or worse, let go? This balance consideration is about to become important. So let's get back to the shop and see how the setup is going. So this is the burl that we got from Peach State Lumber in yes. Kennesaw. Like yes, it. isn't it beautiful? It is. It's actually a little bulky and big for my lathe, so I'm gonna yeah. cut it down on the bandsaw. Well, that looks dangerous, but let's talk about why it's happening. Think of our spinning burl like a washing machine. As long as all of the mass or clothes are balanced, the washer will spin smoothly. But due to the wonky shape of this burl, its center of mass is not on the axis of rotation, which is similar to say you putting all of your towels on one side of the washer. When the spin cycle comes along, the washer starts dancing across the floor. Having the mass of a rotating object off center from the axis of rotation means the center of mass of the whole system is spinning, creating a vibration as the mass shifts back and forth across the object. Ensuring the wood center of mass is on the axis of rotation is especially important as rotational speeds increase while you're turning. Because if those vibrations cause your workpiece to break free, it will shoot off at high speed. Just watch this. Now let's see if we can salvage our bowl project. Is there another option, like if I don't want to have to deal with all of these weird features? You can start with what's called a bowl blank. You can kind of tell that it's not perfectly round. Mm -hmm. It's sort of oblong, which is a good place for us to start turning. Turning is one of my favorite things to do with woodworking. You're basically taking a piece of wood and creating something completely different with it. It's easy to learn how to turn with carbide cutters and you can have a bowl or a plate done in just a few hours. If I wanted to make this perfectly round, like this needs to be flat, right? This whole piece is, this is parallel to this, then I would use this and this gives me a straight edge. But when I want to do something round, then I would start to round it over like that. And because this part of the bowl has a concave shape, then I want to make sure I'm using this to round it out. So I'm basically controlling it with my right hand, resting this one up against a tool rest, and I'm controlling it loosely with this. It's your I turn. Know, but it's your design. Like at it's, this point, it's a beautiful art it's piece. Your, take your left hand. And some people turn like this. Mm -hmm. So you can find whatever feels best for you. And I'm just going in like that. And I'm not pressing into it, you're kissing it. I'm not gonna remove a lot because at this point I feel like you've got you're getting your shaping <laughs> going. So <laughs> look at her. She's a natural. This is such a more zen thing than hearing loud metal grinding. Like, like I love metal work, don't get me wrong, but I can see why people enjoy this. So how'd I do, Coach? You did great. So you get a feel for it. And that's the beauty of, of turning is you make it whatever you want it to be. It's your creation. That's why I love turning. I mean, it's neat how the woods actually revealed itself too. Cause as I went mm -hmm. deeper, these started coming. So it's like you have the natural topography of the bowl, but then you have like what looks like a topography map. Right. Here, which is like super fun. See, you can already start to feel it's coming out a little bit smoother oh, yeah. already. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, look yeah. at feel the inside. Oh, it just like came up. Yep. Look at now, the ones that were like side circles are now actually mm -hmm. perfectly like, mm -hmm. a, like a mountain topography. Right. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. 
use a glove and cutting board oil or whatever kind of finish. And you can use like natural beeswax and right. stuff too, right? Yep. Like I do that with leather too. Yep, natural beeswax, linseed oil. Wow, look at that color come out. That looks good. That looks yes. real good. And this is nice because we're actually, we're maintaining the natural color, but you could, could you stain this the same way you could stain other wood or would you not? Uh, no. So if you are going to spend the time, money and effort into prepping raw lumber, it's sort of like sacrilegious to cover it with stain because you're, you're kind of covering up the natural beauty. Look what you did. Look what we did. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. This beautiful. <laughs> So there's one thing I like to do to celebrate the end of every episode, but we're gonna have to go outside and we should bring the bowl. Okay. 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 And so on three, two, one, you just throw. <laughs> that was a good one.